Today we're looking at section 4, Graphing Functions with Excel, out of chapter 1 of Business Calculus with Excel. In this section, we'll walk through a series of examples for graphing, added complications with each example, graphing a simple graph of a fixed function, having parameters in that function so you can look at families of functions together, controlling over the x values or the domain, more than one function at a time, graphing the functions when they're not next to each other, formatting the graph, and graphing with other software. As is normal practice, I will follow the structure of the text, but not the same examples. I note that videos or text examples are attached to the text. Again, it's worth pointing out that for the examples using Excel, there are links to videos and YouTube videos doing those particular examples. Two things to look at are you can have the worksheets that were used in the section or the Excel worksheets not quite filled in so that you can follow along. I'm going to use a version of that for doing the problems. The first problem is I want to graph a nice simple function y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5 going from minus 10 to 10. It's useful to show the formulas y equals x squared is um, if I'm in cell B15, x is A15, so x squared minus 4 times x plus 5. I'm going from 10. I'm going to do minus 10 to 10 in about 20 steps, so I'm going to have 1 as my step. I highlight the 9 and 10, change my cursor so that I can do a quick fill, bring it down, and that gets my x values going from minus 10 to 10. I'm going to do the similar thing on the f of x. And what we'll notice is that if I'm in cell b15, x was a15. But if I'm in b16, my x is a16. I can unshow the formulas now and look at numbers. To graph them, I'm going to highlight, click, and drag to highlight the two columns, x and f of x, and the labels. And then I'd like to insert. And what we'll do as our standard is to do a marked scatter plot. So we have the dots, and it's connected by a smooth curve. So this gives us a graph of the function that we can look at. The next thing I'd like to do is to be able to take the graph and look at different uh, look at different quadratic equations. And so I'd like to say I want right now a to be 1, b to be minus 6, and c to be 0. And that's not what a, b, and c are set up for. I'm going to once again show formulas. And for f of x, I would like that to be equal to a times x squared plus b times x plus c. The problem is, if I drag this down with quick fill, notice that not only does my x change, my a, b, and c change. I'd like them to stay where they are. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of the b, in, in front of the numbers with b's. That makes them, the number part of it, to be an absolute rel rather than relative reference. And now if I copy it down, notice that b10 stayed b10 and b9 stayed b9. With that, I'd like to fill out minus 10 to 10. Once again, I'm going to unshow the formulas. And this sets me up to be able to do the graph. Again, I have both x and y. I'm going to insert a marked scatter plot. And the point of this is, if I've looked at it and want to look at a different quadratic equation, so if I want to change a from minus 1 to 2, I just change a from minus 1 to 2. 
and it updates it in all of the various cells that I'm looking at. So this lets me have parameters and do any quadratic function I want, changing the values. I can go back to the original, A was 1, B was minus 6, C was 0, and when we do that, it gives the graph. The next thing is I'd like to be able to control the X range. If I'm looking at this graph, something's interesting happening around 3, and I'd like to zoom in on that. We're going to have the same basic setup doing 20 steps. What that means, though, is I'd like to have where I start and how much I go be a parameter. So I already have the equation set in, and I want to start at my starting point. So I put an equals, click on the cell, I have the starting point. My next value, however, I'm going to be whatever was before, plus my step, and I need to modify that a bit because when I drag down, A18 should change to A19 to A20, but I want that E12 to remain the same. I'm going to put a dollar sign in there as an absolute reference. Now when I fill in, it fills in, I'm going to go down to 38, I'm going to similarly fill in the formula. I want to unshow my formulas. I now would like to look at a graph. So I'm going to insert, I'm going to go to my charts and insert a marked scatter plot, and here's my graph, and I'm looking at this and saying, around three is interesting, so I'd like my x start to be two, and my x step to be 0.1. And I can see that I've got a vertex there, having zoomed in on that region. I can look at what happens if I, instead of 0.1, do 0.01, and we're getting something that's a straight line then. I'm going to start it at 2.9, doing 20 steps of 0.01. It's still looking like a parabola. So this lets me, having the start and the stop, the start and the step lets me look at it and say I'm going to do 20 steps starting at a given point and this is how big the step size is that lets me control where in the x-axis I'm graphing and doing the equivalent of zooming in. The next step I'd like to do is graphing multiple functions and once again we're going to show the formulas and see that I have a linear function, a quadratic function, and a cubic function. I'd like my step to be 1. I'm going to go from minus 10 to 10, as I've been doing all along. I'm going to copy my functions down. And so I have my functions all in place. I'd like to see all three graphs together. If I look at all three graphs together, I highlight and make sure that I'm highlighting x as well as the various y values. I'd like to now insert a marked scatter plot. And one of the things to note is the three things are right on top of each other because my cubic equation is so much bigger than my quadratic or linear equation that it bleaches them all out. One of the things I'm going to do when we're looking at formatting is I'm going to control click and format the data series. And in particular, I'd like to put that cubic equation on a different axis. So the cubic equation I now can see and the quadratic and linear equation are showing up because the cubic equation is going from minus 1500 to 1500 and the linear and quadratic equations are going from minus 15 to 15. 
and so I don't bleach out what's happening with these two anymore. So that was one thing I did of I changed to a secondary axis for one of the three. It's worthwhile to note about in chart we can add lots of different things whether my axes are horizontal or vertical I can title the axes I can do a chart title right now I have a title above the chart I'm going to change my title to three functions I can decide other features that are always worth um, add chart elements the one probably most interesting is my legend, which is what the colors mean as far as which functions. And so I can put the legends to the right, and now we see those have shown up on the side. The other feature that I'm going to want to look at is sometimes I want to see not three graphs, but just two graphs. Or, so I'm going to look at F and H, and I like to see those two graphs together. And it will depend on your operating system. On a Mac, I'm going to do the first column, and then hold Command, hold that down, and be able to highlight the second column, come up, click, and drag, and highlight the third column. So I've highlighted my X values and the two graphs that I want to see. I'm going to insert my chart, my mark scatter, and we have the chart with the two functions. This time I'm going to do control click, format the data series, and put the linear function on a different axis, on a different scale. So this shows me seeing the two graphs on the different scale and being able to do that. A mistake that students sometimes make is they want to graph two functions and just graph the y values. And if I try doing that, it's worthwhile noting the fun picture I'll get, which looks nothing like the two graphs because what I've done is I've said the square is the x and the other is the y and what i really wanted to do was not have this be x and this be y but have x over here and both of them together a last thing worth noting is other graphing software excel has a lot of good features it's not the best grapher there will be times i will want to add a graph in with what i'm doing and so I want to be able to graph with Excel, but sometimes I just have a function and I want to look at a quick graph. And my suggestion then is to use other software. The textbook talks about Wolfram Alpha, but for simply graphing, I find the easiest software to deal with is Desmos. At desmos.com slash calculator, it's free software. And if I'm interested in a function like f of x equals x squared plus 5x minus 6, it graphs it for me. I'm looking at this and saying, I'd like to change my y scale here. I can either do that simply by zooming out, or I can go to the wrench there and change the x-axis and y-axis and the scales that I'm on. That I might decide I want the more, the bigger y, but I want my x values to go back down where they were before. So this lets me control those. So the things that you've looked at is how to graph in Excel, how to add extra features to your graph, do two graphs together, and how to graph in Desmos. Thank you.